Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we honor you. We are here to listen to your word. Bless us as, we in, as you interpret the word for us. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Let's get seated. Praise the Lord, wherever you are. Buona sifiwe. Yes, I can see some people are not wave, waving at me. Uh, I don't know why. I'm born again this morning. To them that are visitors, I'm Simon Murigenjaga, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. My wife is with me. I don't know where she's seated. Yeah, somewhere there. And we are well. Uh, this coming Sunday, we'll be having what we call Family Sunday. And all of you are invited to attend at Kise, is it? A gardens, where we are expecting to have pomp and color in this service. We have one of the best family therapists whom I know personally. We have invited, courtesy of uh, Waweru, our uh, elder, the chairman. Yes, Dr. Susan. Uh, Dr. Susan, I know him. I know her uh, because she taught me in my, one of my courses. And therefore, I know what she is capable of. Please don't miss. Invite as many as possible. This is family Sunday. So all your family members, let them not miss. We'll be having other goodies in the service as usual. I don't know what is there for them that Sunday. You can come and say something. Just one minute. Buona sefime. Are you happy? Uh, we are saying that the uh, parish minister is saying we have invited Dr. Susan. We have also invited uh, DJ Kevix, a gospel DJ. Na siku hiyo ni tukuje na viatu ya rubber shoes. Eh? It will be a day like no other day. We have prepared our uh, you, uh, children. The children will have uh, bouncy castle and other games. And therefore parents and us members, please, Iyo siku tuti, tusi kose kuja. Transport is go, as you have just been told. From 8.30 here, we have buses waiting for you to take you to Kise. And after everything, tutakuwa na chakura ya kutosha. God bless you. Na chakula hiyo mtalipia. <laughs> mtalipia na Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Sunday. Iyo ikishikana na family Sunday. Kwa hivyo muna kuja kurudishia buwana shukurani. Na ni vizuri kutoka inje na kutembea. Hata kurelax, kusikia atmosphere ya inje. Eh? Sasa hiyo ni siku ya fun. Na pia tunarudishia mungu shukurani. So, you are all welcome with, a fam with your families and be prepared to enjoy the day. Amen? Yeah, today we are having a topic entitled Identity in Christ. And we have read from the book of Genesis, chapter number one. This is a very critical portion of scripture because it is the beginning of the Bible. And therefore, whatever is contained in that text is very crucial, very important to understand. Because this is towards the creation. And uh, as I was trying to study the scripture, trying to understand the identity one thing that struck me is asking myself about this uh, identity. What is this all about identity? And I was trying to imagine each one of us has got an ID. You have an ID and the name that is written in that ID identifies you as so and so. And for this matter, the Bible also wants us to take an identity from God. Not just the earthly, you know, identity, 
but also to be identified with God. And this is why identity in Christ comes in. And as I was reading also, it is a very unique portion of the scripture from starting from verse uh, 26 of chapter 1 because it is reading then God said let us made man in our own image according to our likeness let them have dominion over fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. That means man was made last of all creatures. You read this, the, the, the uh, pre, uh, preceding uh, verses, uh, which are from verse 1. You will see that... <coughs> Uh, man was made last of all those creatures that it might be suspected that it might be suspected that he was in any way helper to God. He is made the last to show that he did not participate anywhere to create the world. Therefore, he is a created being. This must be forever humbling us. Because, as Job says in Job chapter 38, verse 4, Where was thou? when I laid the foundation of the earth. That it was an honor and a favor to him that he was made last, this man. It is an honor and a favor that man was made last of everything. Why? An honor for the method of creation was to advance from that was less perfect to that which was more so and was more, you know, uh, more better than what had been created. Showing this is the, fla the, the, the finest of everything that was created. And you will see more of that. And also a favor that it was not fit he should be uh, lodged. He should be lodged in the palace designed for him till it was completely lifted up and furnished for his redemption. You see, he's the only creature that God even had the you know, the honor and the favor to place him somewhere and designated area for him to lodge. And therefore, you should not take yourself lightly. Man is so valuable to God. And man, as soon as was created, he had a full visible of creation before him both to contemplate and to take the comfort of. This man we are talking about was given even the privilege to look after everything else that God had created. This is who you are. That God placed you above every other creature. That man was made the same Day, you can see that it was made the same day if you read the story with the beasts uh, because of their body was made of the same earth uh, the, 
But even if it's made from the same dust with the beast, man has something special in him. The breath, the life of God in him. Is different from any other creature created. Man's creation was more a signal and immediate act of divine wisdom and power than that of the other creatures. The narrative of it is introduced with something of solemnity and manifest uh, distinction from the rest. Uh, if you read clearly, you'll see hitherto to, his create, uh, to this creation, it had been said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be firmament. Let the earth or waters bring forth. Such statements have been there in the preceding verses. Such is not for man when he was created. Uh, the word of the command now turns into word of consultation. For God to create man, he had to sit down and consult. Consult with the Trinity. Praise the Lord. This is so unique about you. For he says, let us make man for whose sake the rest of the creatures were made. This is a work we must not take into our own hands. The creation story teaches us this is not our work. It has taken God to put you where you are. And you did not participate in any way in this kind of creation. It is God himself. And for man is special. In the sense that it, when it comes to man, it is like, uh, let, us make a, uh, um, let us make man in our own image. These are very powerful words. In the former, he speaks of one having uh, authority. In this as one having affection. You know, in the former, he was the one, you know, God talking, let there be. But for this one, it's like he has affection. God has love for this particular person that he is making because he is the only one that is giving charge to take care of the other created things and beings. If you read Proverbs chapter 8, verse that one, it's good you can project. Proverbs 8, that one. Says, um, you can read for yourself. My version is a bit different, but it says, he delights in them the sons of men. Now, it, it seems like uh, this was the work which he longed to, to be at as if he said. Uh, this is a statement which we can coin and say like when God was creating us, this statement is having settled at preliminaries. You know, after doing the preliminaries, he says, let us now apply ourselves to business. Hallelujah. Apply ourselves now to business, let us make man. 
Man is a serious business. He means, God means his business to create us because we are in charge of the universe. And man was to be a creature different from all that had been hitherto made. Flesh and spirit, heaven and earth must be put together in him and he must be allied to the both worlds. And therefore God himself did not only undertake to make him uh, but is pleased so as to express himself as if he called a council to consider of the making of him. This let us make man brings the three persons of Trinity consulting about us and concurring together to bring man to be where you are. Man, when he was made, was to be dedicated and devoted to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Do you know this is why we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Because you belong to the Trinity, you are created by God, by this statement, let us make man. This is why we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To give you an identity. And this is the identity we have in Christ. The second uh, or the third thing that we are getting is man was made in God's image and after his likeness image of God we in the Latin or uh, what, uh, what, it, what it's, it was original in the Bible uh, Imago Dei the image of God telling us all what we are, we are, we are reflection of God. We are reflection of God. We are made in his likeness. Yes, you see, these are two words. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. Two words to express the same thing and making each other more expressive. You know? Image and likeness denote the likest image, the likest, the nearest resemblance of any of the visible creatures. In other words, we, in a way, if you have a mirror, you have a mirror, and the ladies, I know you have the mirrors in your uh, handbags. You always carry your mirrors. Do you have it? Ladies, you have mirrors? Yes, can you open your handbags and then you remove a mirror? Because you normally apply lipstick even when we are praying. And then look at yourself. Look at yourself. Look at that creature called who called Elsie. Yeah? Yes. Do you have a handbag? Ah. Eh? So look at yourself. Whom are you seeing? That person you are seeing is the image. That is the image. So we are the image. We reflect God. If you read in Psalms number 8, are you there? Hmm. 
Uh, Psalm. Where is the book of Psalms? Mm. When I want to look for Psalms chapter 8. Um, chapter 8. What does it read? Ule ana project ajatoa Psalms 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens, out of the earth of the babes, and nothing in fact you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you may you have ordained, what, number four is the verse that I want us to check. What is man? What is man? That you are my, mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him. Verse five also. You have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. This is the man that God is so much concerned. Above every other created being, you are so special. Your identity is so special that you are reflecting. You are a small God. You read down there, you say, for you have made him lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field. Hey, this is, in other versions they say, you have made him a small God. We look like God. This is a powerful statement of our identity. That as we reflect God, this talks of, the, of God's character in us. That we are supposed to do like God. Because he has given us his image to reflect him. And God is good. God has no defect. And therefore man is expected also to work like God. Um, in the likeness of his creator, uh, this man, though he is made like God, sometimes does not reach the standard of God. Because you read chapter uh, 3 of Genesis, we read of the fall of man. Originally, God had given us to walk in victory over everything. Because God did not want us to go through, uh, you know, defeat. And due to the fallen nature of man, this is why we have the second you know, identity identified with the Christ who came to bring us back to where we are supposed to be. And this is why we are talking of identity in Christ. When we are talking of the identity of man, we are also considering that most of the time we lose this identity and we are in what we call identity, identity crisis and especially for our youths they, have, they are in a stage we call 
identity confusion. Where they try to find themselves as they grow up to know whom they are. But identity crisis, I would put it to all of us. Because in one way or the other, we try to find ourselves because we have lost ourselves in the midst of many things that we go through. This is why you read in the book of Colossians, and I want us to read Colossians. I'm very brief because of the other service. I will be more elaborate in the second service. In the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse um, 15. You'll see the word image. The word image indicating Christ ruling him, himself as God coming on earth. Colossians 1 15. What is it saying? He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Again, you look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. Uh, verse, yes, Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. Tells us, and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him, and you can see, of him in capital, who created him. We have identity in Christ, created in the image of God. And that image is imprinted in us by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He became man like we are. Today, we can say that we have identity with God himself coming here where we are and walking with us. We are so special people that God has chosen us. You also read in the book of John, Gospel according to John chapter 1. Gospel according to John chapter 1. We are connecting still with Genesis chapter 1. And John speaks of in the beginning. Chapter 1, John speaks of in the beginning. Verse 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him nothing was made. That was made. In him was life. And life was the light. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it the true light there was a man verse 6 sent from God whose name was John and this man came to witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe he is talking of this one who was sent as the word. Verse 10, verse 11, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, you people, many as who received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Praise the Lord. We have identity to them that who believe in his name. 
we have him with Christ. We bear a name with Christ. Having been created and with a good intention for us to rule this world and to have dominion when we have lost the identity God reaches us here on earth and gives us you know to be his and those who believe in him he gave them the right to become his children how do you get your born you are, and you are given a name by your parents yes we are born of god and therefore we have an identity we are his children and i want to tell you there is a difference now there is a difference between people and the children get me right there is a difference between people and the children people is everybody people is everybody we are the people of Kenya Sindio. the people of Kenya we are the people of Kenya and our president is who is the president of Kenya? His Excellency Ruto. Sindio. So we are his people. If he goes to other countries to visit, we are the children of, uh, we are the people of Kenya through the president of the republic. But I'm using this example of a president. He has his children his children he has his children one is Shalin and the other is you know them can we be counted in the inheritance of Ruto's uh, property because you are not his children and inheritance is given to people, uh, to, to the children of that person. I thank God because I'm not a people to him. I am his child. I have an identity. The identity of Christ. I'm born in the family of God. Praise the Lord. And if you are not in that category of being counted as a child of God. You are just a people. People, people, Maria Gakara. People, Matiro Boyagiomono. People are not taken care of so much. I want you to become his child, to bear the name of Christ. That you are, and you become a Christian, you become his child through what we normally do here. And I had told you that is why we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You have been born again. Praise the Lord. That is the identity that we are talking about. In the next service, because I'm not continuing uh, very much because of the Holy Communion, I'll be talking of how to find this uh, identity. I'll be talking more of finding this identity. Identity in Christ. You have an ID. The ID reads my ID reads uh, Simon Mulege Wajaga. Simon.
Simon Murigi Jaga. And I have a number of the ID. Do you know my number? It is a secret number. But because I know you not keep it in your minds, it is 10905611. Nobody has that number. Where Kauradi Kawaero? If, if you see somebody writing my number, he wants to, to get into my accounts. Yes. And I know there are some people who, who stole some money from Equity Bank. I have a, an account with Equity Bank. So, I fear. <laughs> but all is well. I talked with the people of Equity. They are telling us not to panic. Equity is okay. Uh, because they have known what happened. Uh, so, Kamodo, what is your ID number? Because there could be some people called Kamodo. But there is that unique number that you have been given. I have a DNA that distinguishes me from other people. To know me, I belong to Jag. You have to do a DNA test. Right? To know that that my identity. To identify me. And you know there are many cases of trying to find their identity. There are people claiming they were born by so and so and they, 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 the person has died. If you are not sure, don't try to go and say you are born by so and so. Because the DNA will say who you are. You will be an imposter. I want to tell you I'm not an imposter in the kingdom of God. I am known by name. He knows my name. There is a song that we sing. He knows my name. You the coroner near my guild. You tell we gain it Yes, he knows my name. I have an identity. I have an identity with God. I have an identity with Christ. Do you want to get the identity? Do you want to have an identity? Just don't remain a people. We want you to have an identity. Identify yourself with Christ. Identify yourself with God. And since you are created by God, you have no reason to deny or to reject this offer. Of belonging to him. Because God when he created us. He created us not like any other being. He gave us the choice. To choose whether we want to remain with him. Or we do not want. And the choice is. Having Jesus in our hearts. In the name of the father. The son and the holy spirit. He knows my name. Aya and Alea. Projected. <laughs> 